host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I am your host, Wes Tankersley. Today, we have a very special guest. His name is Anthony Williams. He is an author. He also is a marketer. He is a podcaster. He has a lot of awesome things going on. Anthony, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's exciting to have you on here. We've been talking for a little bit and we kind of, we've got some things going on together, kind of collabing a little bit. Um, You're born in New York. You're living in California now. Can you give us kind of just a little bit of background to who you are and and what you got going on? (laughs) Yeah, man. Born and raised in New York, came out to California about 12 years ago. Um, Just all life events, man. If you get a chance to check out the book, On Borrowed Time, Reinvention of a Lost Soul, that pretty much gives the entire explanation of of my background right so born and raised in new york uh you know always born with a heart problem and then eventually was able to play hockey and uh that's where i was man that's what i was doing till till i was about 20 years old when i was given less than 48 hours to live and that kind of changed the landscape (laughs) of uh of everything right so it it just it it got kind of crazy after that in uh 2008 came out to california start things over do a little reinvention and i never left man i ended up meeting my wife and and having my son at that time uh never left and then you know a couple years ago i was blessed enough to deliver my daughter on the side of the 15 freeway in uh, escondido so you know (laughs) that's crazy (laughs) that uh what happened just couldn't make it couldn't make it to the hospital in time huh no man i'll give you i'll give you a fun little a little story for the audience so yeah if you go read the book man the whole book itself uh that's like the the, one of the final stories that's in the book and the whole cumulation of of everything that comes together was really um just my life in general right like the rock star without the money and that's that's what it was at that point in time when i wrote the book it was just to become a better person but my whole dog the whole thing with my daughter was we had all the plans in the world <laughs> to make it to the hospital, right? Like, so the night before I walk upstairs, I look at my wife and, and everyone laughs when I say this because I looked at her and I'm like, you don't look good. Like, you look like you're going to have a baby. Everyone's like, you don't tell a pregnant woman they don't look good. I'm like, no, no, it wasn't that. It was, you look like you're going to have a baby, right? And so she convinced me. We had a doula at the time. And look, shout out to all the doulas out there if people want to have a natural birth and stuff. But this doula, she didn't get the memo. Right. She did not have an alarm on. She was not doing her job, whatever the case was. Uh, and I get woken up at like five thirty, six o'clock in the morning by my son. And he's telling me, mom can't get off the couch. And I'm like, no, like this is not happening here. <laughs> now, meanwhile, there's a hospital three miles away from where we were living at the time. But in my head, it was just, we have to get to the doctor that she had scheduled. And the night before I was like, Hey, let's go to the hospital. I'll get you in. Like, don't you know who I am? Right? Like I will go talk to them. And she's like, I don't want to walk around the parking lot. Like what's the worst this could happen? Like you start going into labor in the parking lot, they bring you in the hospital, right? It's better than having it here on the floor. So yeah, man, it was almost like a high speed chase. Uh, that took place. Oh. I started ripping down the the 15 freeway at like 100 miles per hour, man. It was bottleneck traffic at like 7:30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And if you ever drive down, driven to uh, San Diego first thing in the morning, you ain't moving, man. Right? You're not moving at your pace. So I start driving on the side of the road, uh, get back onto the freeway, and I see a cop up ahead, and I'm hanging out of the car. You know, we had a Nissan Rogue, right? And so I'm hanging halfway out of this car, screaming for the cop pulling up at a hundred miles per hour. My, my son's in the backseat thinking he's on a roller coaster. Like his arms are up in the air. He's all happy. Right. My wife's over there with the demonic sounds coming out. I have no idea what she's speaking. She's speaking some sort of Lord of the Rings language. I have no idea. And the cop looks into the car and he sees her face. He sees my face like ghost white and I'm screaming. I thought he's going to shoot me, uh, but he didn't thank God. And he just looks and he gets that face of like, Oh man, this is, You know, this is obviously pretty serious. So uh, he taps the brakes, gets behind us, throws his back lights on, man. And there is like a buffer. It's like a 600, 900 foot buffer between us and other cars. And he's giving me the signal to go. Now, if you ever get a signal like that from a cop, man, take advantage of it while you can. I definitely did. I was at like a good 100, 110 miles per hour. He's behind me. Traffic's parting like the sea. It's it's it was unreal. It was a lot of fun. But people like, you know. 
people looking on probably thought like it was a high speed chase or I'd done something wrong. <laughs> uh, but that wasn't the case. And he, so, you know, he, he finally honks the horn at us and tells us like, Hey, we ain't going to make it, man. The traffic's too bad. I radioed for, um, uh, for an ambulance and a fire truck. You got to get off this exit. So if anybody really wants to, you know, fact check the story, <laughs> go for Canyon road on the, uh, on uh, the 15 South in California, right on that off ramp. Uh, as soon as I got out, man, I got my son out the car. The cop came out, grabbed my son, moved him away from any traffic. I got to the front seat of the car, and the baby was inside my wife's yoga pants. So you know oh, that was man, that was there. And you know, and for the for the other tidbits of the story man there's a lot of comedic elements to it like the cop came up to me asked me if i was okay i'm like no man no i'm not it looks like someone murdered a moose in the front seat of the car bro <laughs> like have you were you here when all of this took place and he's just looks at me with a smile walks away comes back like 20 minutes later Are you all right man i'm like no <laughs> but i have to be so i'm gonna put on espn and I'm going to drive down to the hospital and then, you know, all the fans can read the rest of it to kind of hear how the rest of this stuff took place. Oh, man, that sounds like an awesome story. So now now you have to read the book, right? That's that's all there is to mm-hmm. it. So speaking of the book, it's I, I, that's one story in there. But why did you decide yeah. to write a book about it? It's kind of about your life, right? That's what you were saying. What, what gave you the idea to write a book about your life? I have yet to read a book or know of a book that had all the elements of what happened to me in my life in one book. I'm not saying I'm completely unique and these things never happen to anybody, right? A baby's been delivered on the side of the road, probably by a million people. It's obviously not something you're going to see all the time. But if you go back to my childhood, when I was born six weeks old, uh, I had like pyloric stenosis and, uh, I had to have surgery on my stomach because I would just vomit you know while eating it was like projectile vomit right it's kind of a common thing that happens with people kids stomachs kind of get messed up whatever the case is and there was a fire in the hospital as i was being operated on right so i guess maybe that set the tone and then i had uh, a heart murmur and they thought that it was something i was born with later they found out i actually got it from um getting strep throat so it was like a lot of things finding, right? So I had no idea. All of a sudden, I'm about nine years old, and there's some sexual abuse that takes place from uh, not my immediate family, like a friend of the family. And I just, man, right after that, it was I just used hockey as like tunnel vision. I don't know if people can kind of explain it but um, or understand it that way. But the way I always explain it was I, I didn't know how to speak about it. I didn't know how to talk about it. I didn't know what to do. So hockey became that outlet and it saved me that and video games saved me probably from a lot of misery as a kid. And and I was just doing so well and I was projected to go into the NHL and do all these things. And it just, the downward spiral took place at 20 years old. I ended up uh, being being given less than 48 hours to live as my, my heart gave out uh, endocarditis ate away my mitral valve essentially. So I was hemorrhaging in my finger uh, under my toes and behind my eyes, which is why they gave me, less than 48 hours at the age of 20. And just so people know, I say it in the book when I found out the news, because it's always the question everybody wants to ask, like, what did you, you're 20 years old and you heard this. I'm like, I laughed like the Joker in Batman. (laughs) And I like, it it was a maniacal type of laugh. Like, fuck, man, I'm 20. I'm here. What am I going to Right? Like you're in the hospital. They're they're basically telling you, Hey, we're going to pump you with all this stuff. We'll see if it works you got your parents looking at you like, how the hell is my 20 year old going to die? Right? Like we should be the ones to go, not them. You know, no, no parent ever wants to bury their kid. Um, and I just laughed because it was like, I've been through all this stuff already. I'm 20, right? Like if I'm going to go, just go, you know, that's, that's what my mindset was, right? Like just make a clean slate for somebody else to, you know, to have some fun. But, uh, that was it, man. That was the crazy, the crazy part, and it was really weird. Now I had lost everything. I'd lost my career. I lost who I was. I no longer was able to do the thing that was so, that was keeping this pain from being a nine year old from coming out. Right. So then it ended up turning into you know drugs and stuff, man. And it just I ended up having an intervention going out to California, and I just never left. You know, after that point was that was a wake up call. And so I, you know, I'm not trying to tell people like, Oh, you, you know, you can cure things this way. I don't want people to get it twisted. Like 
addiction and depression, anxiety, and all of that stuff is a very dark and ugly place. But I will tell you, if you have support, use it because most people don't think that they have support. And that was the thing that saved me, right? You know, that was absolutely the thing. So from there, um, I don't know, man, just my mind kind of opened up. I just said, Hey, I I'm on borrowed time. And that's why I named the book that way. Right. So I figured if anything I do at this point, what am I going to do? Fail, right? Like what am I going to do a marketing campaign? Am I do a podcast? Like people don't like, like, you're not going to hurt my feelings. You know what right. I mean? Like I was dead. Like it's nothing you can say to me. That's going to take that. I'm not going to take it that personally, you right. know? So it, it just kind of opened things up, man. And my father was my biggest cheerleader and he kept pushing me. You need to do this. You need to do this. So on, um, March 17th of 2020, I purchased my podcast platform. And I'm like, dad, I'm going to do this, all this stuff. The next day he died. And I'm like, dude, right? Like then it became all about me again, right? I'm in the plane on the way back to go visit my mother and my sisters. Uh, like I jumped in a plane immediately, found out within three hours I was on a plane back to back to New York. And um, I just, it was terrible, man. It was like, he's the one who pushed me to do it. He was telling me you have to go on, you know, talk to people. This is what you want to do. This is what makes you happy. And I support you a thousand percent. And then I was like, dude, you know, you had to, you didn't have to kill him to, you know, have me do a podcast, you know, like it, you know, that's where my head was at. Uh, but from then, man, that's just where I kind of started the launch pad. I just took it from there, man. You know, you like, that was it. Like, there's nothing you're going to tell me. I'm just going to do it the same way. I, the same way that I approached my hockey career or anything I've ever done in my life. So and there's a whole bunch that you do besides that, right? So like you do have like this marketing thing going on and, and you're doing your podcast and you've written this book, but you also do other stuff too, right? So you, you create video games and things like yeah. that as well, right? Because you talked about video games being sleep. something that was, yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of yeah. believe that. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think you might not. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, you know, for the fans out there, man, if you like video games, um, I went and I graduated in 2015. I did a four-year degree in three years. I graduated from Full Sail University. I left with uh, team building. Um, I left with the Academic Achievement Award. I left with Leadership Awards. I just I knew I wasn't going to be a programmer in the corner of the room. That that's the best way I could put it, right? Like I just I knew that wasn't for me. So I really was interested in team building. I really was interested in leadership. I was really interested in taking what I learned from games, the fun, the engagement, um, that impulse, right? Everything, the joy that you get, like really attaching to a story um, in that way. And I took that and I started doing messaging, right? I started working with telecommunication companies. I started working with uh, messaging companies. But I am now. Um, the executive producer of a small video game company. It's a startup company, but they put out a game, Vectormirror.0. And the name of the company is the Vectormirror Initiative. And Vectormirror.0 is a free game that's on Steam. So for all your fans, please go uh, and you can play it for free. Um, there are speed competitions that go for it. It has uh, about 100,000 downloads currently at this moment. And for a small company that is nobody or anything uh that's pretty dang good so uh we're really happy about it and actually on the 19th we have a second game so we did two games just so everybody understands we produced two games that are available on steam in a year two games like two actual full games what we would consider full games in a year and uh the second game is there's new content coming out on june 19th there is new levels new content, all of that coming out on June 19th. So you can go to the Steam store and just type in Vector Mirror. You'll see both games. One is completely free and one is an early release option. And uh, if, you know, if you want, I can work on, you know, I don't know how you want to do this, but if you got some, you know, top fans, I'll look and see if I can get them a key for a free game for, you know, the second one. So if you want to do a little promotion for that, I'll offer that to you and your audience to uh, maybe one or two people. We get them a free key to play the game. Yeah, that'll be awesome. When we promote it out, we'll we'll figure something out before it goes out onto the onto the live portion. And uh, yeah, definitely let's let's make that happen. I think that'd be pretty exciting yeah. for them. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about. So you have a podcast, but you also you you do some marketing stuff. You're certified in some marketing, so in Google Ads and Facebook Ads. Is that what you where your certifications yeah, I'm actually are? Certified? No, I'm certified in Google Analytics. Um, 
<laughs> and uh, I've been doing marketing stuff for a long time, right? Like across all different platforms. That's what I was doing. I did the marketing for Vector Mirror as well and and Burnout Game Ventures where they were. But yeah, my podcast, The Independent Mouth, is, is – uh, I do consulting, everything. But the podcast, The Independent Mouth, is where I wanted to showcase for people of, you know, coming in and try to educate people coming up. And the reason why was um, there's too many DIYs and and this is how you do it, right? And here's the secret answer. And all these people, like, just money grabs, you know, for people. Like, they don't actually give them information. They just take their information. They capture their data. They get paid a little bit. And they give them the most generic information ever. And that always really ticked me off. Like it really made me mad. So I made it a point uh, to work with social marketing, whether it's social media marketing, whether it's more, I mean, I don't care if you're putting out press releases, whatever you want. You know, I have a way of doing it, a process of doing it or a way to do it where it, it makes it less cumbersome for people who haven't done it. You know, teaching people the processes, kind of ways of, of educating them to get in, because you know it as well as anybody, man. Like you do a podcast when you're done recording the podcast, the podcast is over. But now, like, you know, just like your book and everything else is like now you got to market it. Right. Right. Like now now the real work is there. Right. Like you just spent I don't care how long you spent. Maybe maybe it takes you three hours to do your podcast and alter the videos and, you know, or write notes and content like that's already three hours. Yeah. Now you've got maybe another three hours of, of, you know, I got to put it here and upload it here and do this here. And a lot of people just don't understand uh, an easy process to doing that or what they really should be doing is finding out what works for them. You know, a lot of people out there, and this is all part of marketing. It's all part of the consulting services that I do is what is your strategy? Right? Like, what is it for you? I, I get really annoyed when people are out there going, well, it doesn't work because Facebook doesn't – like you understand Facebook really does want you to succeed. I don't care what social media you're on. They want you to succeed so that you spend money. And when you spend money, they make money. So it, they understand if your stuff is not selling and if you're not being seen, they're not going to make money because you're not going to spend the money because you're not making money, right? So – I think a lot of people just get really beat up in the process of trying to understand how things work. And most of them just throw their hands up and go, I don't know how to do this. And then they go pay somebody. This is the part that always annoys me is they go pay somebody thousands of dollars and it doesn't benefit them at all. They see no increases, right? They don't, they don't have confidence on what's there. And second of all, they actually don't even know what's happening. They don't understand what's happening. Nobody actually educates them on what they're doing. So like you're paying this guy and he's like, hey, look at these numbers. Numbers and metrics can be manipulated all day long, right? So it doesn't benefit you to be like, oh, I've got all these likes. But if your likes are people that aren't actually subscribed or aren't engaging in your channel – it doesn't matter. You know, I could have a thousand bots, you know, that get attached. I, I could have right. 1100 followers. A hundred of them are real people and a thousand of them are bots. Well, if I only have a hundred followers, forget the thousand, you know, the thousand bots. If I only got a hundred followers, but I interact with 90 of them or 95 of them or even 70 of them. That's way better than the 70 out of the, the 1100. You know what I mean? Like that's real fuzzy math, but just as a, as a simple thing for people, I, j I just, my whole goal in everything I do is to try to work with people and educating them on creating what works for them. Yes, there's times to send things. There's keywords. I get all that, but that's a really easy thing to figure out. The hardest part of this whole process is finding what works for you and then being able to make that a template. Yeah. And it's never a cookie cutter. That's the biggest thing that I notice with a lot of these people is they think that what works for me or what works for you is going to work for them. And it never, mm -hmm. there's no, you know, perfect idea of what that looks like. It's what you're willing to do and how you're willing to push that out. So correct. Yeah. So you're, it so takes you're, a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. You know that. I mean, oh, I've yeah. watched your stuff, man. You know, like I just want people to understand like what, what Wes is doing, even with his show, you may think like, Oh, it's, you have streaming things like you. Yeah. I think people need to understand how much 
researching and then understanding and then you have to learn how the things work right like so it's it's like all your it's almost like you're a kid right you're just like like a sponge trying to soak up all this information and unfortunately we're adults right like our brain doesn't chunk the same way it does when we're a kid like and that's my video game you know mind talking right there right like your brain works in certain ways and a lot of times it it becomes counterintuitive almost the way that we want to work on something as opposed to what will actually work with us right like our yeah. brain like do a little bit here do a little bit there feel the confidence get the muscle memory then your brain just puts it on autopilot you know when i go and i build a campaign around a guest or an interview that i did the process is there right i do a and then i do b and then i do c and that process is already there so now my brain is ready like oh, okay i'm already thinking this boom 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 right and and in my head the entire time i'm creating a template so i can copy and paste this from here to there and save myself so now instead of six hours I'm at two, right? Right. And and that four hours of quality time in life was better than if you paid me a thousand dollars, right? Because I'm going to make the money at some point, but I can never get the time back, right? So I I you know that's the thing for people so that they don't get burnt out. How many good podcasts just never made it past six months or a year because they flamed out? Yeah. And that's the big thing is it is it's developing that memory, developing those skills, figuring those things out, and. You know, I mean, people always ask, well, are you going to take down the first stuff? I'm not taking down nothing. I want people to see exactly where it started and where it is and what Mm -hmm. it takes to do that. And I think that just creating that blueprint in that picture and showing them how it how it's going to work. That confuses me, Wes. Why would you take down like, okay, so just for people, this is a real life scenario. PewDiePie, right? He was on YouTube. He was a gamer. Um His first videos, he's one of the most successful gaming streamers, right? Or people who put out gaming videos. Look up PewDiePie. He was one of the first big ones that that really started. And then like Ninja took over, right? With Fortnite and all that stuff. And he just started getting more name recognition, whatever. His first videos were terrible. Like if you really go back to the origination of when he started doing stuff, they were really basic. And then... It took him, I think, like a year and a half, two years before like people really caught on. Right. And then his videos started getting better. But I I really I ask people like I've asked so many people, what do you care? Like, do you want this amazing, ridiculous uh, theater that's taking place when you watch? Because like that's very unrealistic for a lot of people that haven't been doing it or don't have teams or budgets. Right. Like, so if you really like a podcaster, but you're going to say like, oh, I didn't like your background. And that's a reason why you're not watching somebody. Then maybe maybe it's just the content isn't good. Right. Right. Maybe it's just you you just don't like it. But most people like to see that journey, Wes. Right. So like the same thing in your mindset is I want to see how you started and I want to see how you got better, because reality of it is that's why I'm tuning in, because you've improved. Your right. craft has improved. Your marketing has improved. And now I got to witness that growth. So now I kind of am excited, like, what's coming next? Yeah. What are you doing next? How is it going to be? Right? Like, and if you're not interacting with your fans, I don't care how wonderful you make your production. You are not including them in what you're doing. And if you know anything about engagement or team building, you want the fans to feel as if they're part of the common goal. So if you're leaving them out, now you're getting now you're causing a friction. Now you're going to be at an impasse because when you do something they don't like now, you're now they have to make a meaningful decision of whether or not they're staying with you or they're leaving. So to eliminate that, that's what I do, you know, as far as marketing, that's the stuff I've talked to you about, right? Right. Of being able to build a team and a network and be able to do those things. Because if you don't, I mean, you're fighting zombies, man. You're, you're jumping into a thousand zombies, right? With, you know, with a water gun. So, I mean, like get, you know, get ready for that because that's going to be a very uncomfortable uh, situation for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and that, like you said, you know, that's, it's just one of those things. People need to see that people need to know that there was a struggle because they see, they see the end result. They never really go back. I, it's funny with a podcast. Usually what happens is I'll listen to one. I'll find one that's like two or three years old. I'll listen to the last episode and I'm like, man, I bet there's a bunch of good stuff back here and I'll go back and I'll listen to 
previous episodes. And those are the people you want. Those are the people who you want. Yep. You got to encapture them, get them going and get them looking at what you did before and know that you've got something good that's coming and moving forward and you're improving. Yeah. So. I Here's here's one thing, man, that most people don't. It, the retention rate. Right. So like when people talk about I have 50,000 subscribers like, OK, right. Like I'm not knocking it. Right. Because because there is value in having a lot of subscribers. But what's your retention rate, man? Because I know over like a four to six week period of my show, I don't drop below 30 percent retention rate. And the first week is always 100 percent. So the second I drop something, it is 100%, right? The the second week, sometimes depending, maybe it's a holiday, you know, whatever the case is, it may go down to like 50 something percent, 53%. But then the following week, that episode is at 67%. You see what I'm saying? And it's not until the fourth or fifth week that maybe it drops below a 50 or a 45%. So the people who maybe watch other shows that couldn't listen to it here, they go back. Right. You see what I'm saying? And that's that's the thing I think people need to understand is the retention rate. Are people going back for your information? Are they listening to you again? Or did they just hit the button, forget about you, and never listen to you? Right. Right? Like Because that happens. And that, that's not something that's going to make me money. Yep. For sure. You got to keep them there. You got to keep them hungry. You got to keep them coming back for more. And yeah, retention's the, <laughs> that's, that's the winner right there. Once you get that, once you figured that out, you're, you're going to be golden, but you can't be done right there though. You got to continue to keep pushing forward. So. And, and you know, I always, I always ask you this too, right? Like, cause we, we're, we're going to get into these conversations more, you know, in future endeavors and things like that. But, um, how much marketing, you know, do you do? Right. And, and how much do you do when it comes time to like, after the episode's done, you know, do you do like a throwback Thursday? Do you do a, in case you missed it, right. Do you do a, I found those to be very successful. Yeah. And I would just say like, that's a free tip for people, you know, and, and if you're ever going to come to me for services, like that's one of the things that I will always bring up, but that's a free tip for your fans and your show, which is if you're not doing that kind of stuff, if you're not, telling people maybe that missed it or whatever else like hey i did this then what do you do like you know that you can only get so much from an impulse right and a right. lot of times those people that you bring back into something they then they share it right and that's really powerful and you need that you need that because yep. like, unless you have huge you know budgets and deep super super deep pockets it's a lot of money that you, that you have to put in to get to a joe rogan status or you know some of these others and uh, look i love joe rogan like the next one and i and i i love the man i really do but like you're not going to be him immediately so like and if you think that's going to happen within six months you're whatever you're taking give to me because it, it is a completely <laughs> alternate reality right well, let's talk a little bit about your podcast before we get to the last question here. It's called the Independent Independent Mouth, right? And you talk mm-hmm. a little bit about what I like about it is the fact that it's not, you know, there's people who lean right, there's people who lean left, and this is a objective view on what's going on. You, I, mm-hmm. I, I heard you on another podcast and I was thinking about it and I was just like, this just makes complete sense. This is the way that I think. This is so stupid that... We have to take someone's word for it. We can't be smart enough to take in our own media, listen to both sides of it and choose right from wrong and choose which way we go. Instead, we let someone tell us how to do it. So your podcast is kind of about that, talking about different sides of it and and going out there. So Mm -hmm. explain a little bit about what you do and why you do it. Yeah. So just remember what I said earlier. Uh, you know, if you happen to just be tuning in right now, go back and listen because I was given less than 48 hours, man. I was on death's doorstep. So like, I, I don't want to waste my time. Right. And that was one of the biggest factors behind it. And my father was a no nonsense kind of guy. He was the biggest joker. Uh, He was a, a teddy bear. Um, but don't BS him. Right. Like he didn't have time for that. That was the ultimate sign of disrespect. So I kind of took that stuff. You know, if I threw all that into like a a cauldron, so to speak, you know, and mixed it around, 
that would be some of the the ingredients of how I made the show. But I take information from the left and the right um, for news, for social you know, uh, issues, whatever. I don't care what it is. Um, and my main goal is to go down the middle, right? Be like, Hey, I don't believe in this because this is how it applies to my life. But I encourage people to dig. I encourage people to find out stuff. And like through my messages, I'm constantly getting messages from people like, Hey, can you verify this? Or is this true? Or what do you think about this? Right. And I'm like, I'm just happy you're doing your own research. I stopped watching mainstream news. That's hand up to God, man, on my kids, dude, I stopped watching Fox news or CNN or MSNBC. I just, it, they're professional pontificators, right? Right. They're scripts there. It's scripts that are written. And why do people say, well, no, you're a conspiracy theorist. You know what? My tin, ho- my, my tin foil hat fits really snug and it is comfortable. If that's what you want to call me, if that's what it makes you feel better, then all the power to you and God bless you. Because here's the deal. If you go back and listen to my podcast, have I said things that people be like, man, this is really borderline. Absolutely. You know what the sad part is? You go listen to my recent episodes. And what am I saying in there? This is what I said on this episode. And look what just happened. Okay. So I I encourage people because you have to understand, man. I think I asked you this question. So maybe I'm going to shoot myself in the foot, right? What's the one way we've always learned in our life? What's the one way we've learned? Yeah, I don't think you've asked me that before, but now you got me really thinking. Like for me, when, by doing, mm-hmm. you know, 100% by okay. doing. How did you do, how, how did you find out how to do it? From the get-go, from the beginning, you know, you start with your parents, right? They sit there and they tell you how to do things and then you go to school and then your teachers start to teach you things. And then, you know, someone else yep. is teaching you and telling you and doing the, you know, teaching you how to do the work and research. So storytelling, right? Yep. In some way, shape or form. And right. you maybe you build your your religious beliefs off of the Bible, the the Quran, the Torah. Right? I, I don't care what it is. I don't care what you believe in. It it it, it is irrelevant to me because it's your personal experience. Right? right. I'm not here to tell you w- that this is better than the next. Okay, that's not my job. Um, but storytelling is how we learned from day one, ever since uh, civilization. Right? If you look at rocks, the, there's cavemen that carved into rocks and put the blood of the guy on the rocks. Right? Like or or hieroglyphics or, you know, Egyptians or Muslim. I don't care. I don't care where you're from, man. Go to, go to every country, continent and place and their storytelling in some way, shape or form, whether it is uh, carvings or whether it is it, papyrus. Who cares? I don't care. Um, storytelling is. So when you really think about it, if if you've gotten bad information from the media, then it's a bad story. Right. right? And if we're constantly not getting a full story. It, it, it's a manipulative story, yep. right? And when I started to feel that way and see that way, and especially with COVID, right? And a lot of people had a lot of free time. And then you go research and you're like, wait a second, this isn't right. So you just want to raise awareness. So, you know, the question I ask everybody is, if you believe in something and I believe in something, it's why I created this show. Why can't we talk about it? And that was the biggest pain point of, I don't care if you believe in the right or the left, or you're down the middle, there's enough people who are in the middle that still have questions. Right. And that that's the reason why I built this show because I said, go do your own research. Now have people come up to me and said, Hey man, what you put maybe wasn't hundred percent correct. And I'm like, you know what? Let me correct that record. When would you, when do you ever see a newscaster doing that? Never. It's not. Never. Right. Yeah. When do you ever see when do you ever see? I mean, God, man, you look at these things. They're so scripted. Like you could almost not even listen to anything during the day. Sit down to watch a news network and you're like, OK, did I just did I did I put the right one on or did I put the one on from yesterday? Right. And it, it's like the same thing regurgitated with like a couple, you know, key points here. Right. Like yep. that going. And I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not watching this anymore. Right. Like and a lot of people are doing that. If you look across news networks, primetime television is down 60 percent, 60 percent. If that was you and I, Wes, in our jobs, we'd have no job. Right. 
Okay. So, you know, that's the reason why I say that. So the, the whole point of the podcast was to go down the middle and encourage people to do their own research. And if you want to debate me on something, <laughs> I am more than willing to, and I love it. I just always give this disclaimer. The nickname for me is, is the, the battle podcaster. If you are going to come, I will not even take notes. You can take all the notes that you want. But I will discuss and debate any topic you want. Just don't be offended if you lose. Yep. Well, it's 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 interesting to listen to, and I really like it. Like you said, I'm not I'm kind of the same way. Media is just a joke right now. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. I mean, every once in a while it just kind of gets in your face and it just makes you think. And it's like I don't need that. I don't need that in my in my mind. You know, I don't need to be mad about this and be upset about that. And it's it's just not worth it. It's like that's what they're trying to do. They're cr- trying to create hate among everyone and don't need it. You can't watch sports, bro. You can't watch sports. I know. You can't play it's a, a video joke. game. You can't like, you, you, man, you can't even like go to the park to play sports with your kids without like, God forbid, if, if you're having a conversation, right? Like, and, and I don't care. Like, this is just an example. Oh, did you see what Trump did? And then like people are looking at you like you just bombed 400 Syrians, right? right? And and you're sitting down to eat dinner. Like the disgusted looks that they give you, right? It's like because I, I mentioned somebody's name. Like I was just talking about like did you nobody even knew what I was talking about, right? Right. So that was the other one where I was like, man, I'm not going to walk around and feel like this. Like it, it it's not going to happen. So like if you just don't like me, it's real simple hit that like button, you know, unsubscribe, block me. You have the power to do so. Why you don't, I will never understand. Instead, you want me to change who I am to make you happy, right? right? And and it, 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 what's that old adage, man? You can't make everyone happy all of the time. Right. So social media allowed us to believe that we could. And, you know, technology lets us believe that we can and and we've forgotten what control we actually have as people. And that's my whole goal is is to allow people to do their diligence and have the fun and make the processes uh, nice and easy and seamless. And in the meantime, well, the book's called On Borrowed Time, the Independent Mouth Podcast. Where can we find all this stuff when we're looking for you? (laughs) Ooh, everywhere because uh, the podcast is on every platform. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, you know, at the Independent Mouth. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me um, on Instagram. Every single place you can find the Independent Mouth. If you just type it in, it pops up. Here's the best part: the website, the, uh, the Independent Mouth dot com. If you literally go to Google, Bing, I don't care which one's far, whatever whatever extension you want to use and type in the independent mouth. I am the only thing that comes up. There is nothing else that does. If you're interested in marketing, if you're interested in consulting, if you're interested in digital media, if you're interested in, you know, team building, anything, uh, process operations, doesn't make a difference. You could send me a message. We can discuss, uh, at the independent mouth.com. And, and, um, you can purchase my book there on borrowed time, the reinvention of a lost soul, or, my book is once again available on Amazon or anywhere. And if you just type in once again on borrowed time, it is the only other book besides one from 1939 uh, that was created. So you will see it and uh, it's got amazing reviews. It's got four and a half stars on uh, Amazon and for, you know, no name author uh, who self published his own book. Uh, I will, I will take that with a smile. That's awesome, man. That's great. Uh, Really exciting. A lot of things that you got going on. It's great that you're the only thing you can find when you look at independent mouth. I don't think a lot of people understand that there's a way to make that happen and you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So, hey, we got one last question before we roll out of here. Uh, This show is called Chaping Success. And really, I think that I'm going to be excited to hear what this one is. But, um, you know, how do you shape your success? How would you define success at the end of the day? I used to think it was money. Um. I really used to think it was money, and I I think that that is an extremely false uh, precedence to to set. So I I changed that over time, and and after I wrote the book, and success to me in shaping that of uh, what it looks like is what are you happy with doing? Are you happy doing what you're doing? Obviously, you have to pay bills, 
But if if you could put your head on the pillow at night, knowing that you did the best that you could in the best interest for whomever you're involved in or with, then you're doing a good job. And I just try and keep it simple. I think take it one day at a time. Hey, I did this. Improve on that the next day until the point where you feel satisfied. Stop thinking Facebook has to make you happy. Stop thinking YouTube has to make you happy. Stop thinking Wes has to make you happy. Stop thinking, right? And just you have to make yourself happy and stop thinking that you're always doing something wrong. You know, there's pencils on erasers for a reason. Uh, we're, there's a, a delete button on your keypad. I just understand we're human. So like you don't have to be perfect 24 hours a day and you're going to make mistakes. And when you make that mistake, here's what defines the character. How did you overcome it and how did you make it better? And it, as long as I can continue to answer those questions for myself, I'm doing pretty good. Oh, that's great. That's a great way to look at it. I love it. I mean, I think that no matter what, like you said, it's there is only one person that that really matters to. And if you can continue to do what's best for you, you're going to go far. Well, yeah. hey, man, I want to say thank you for taking the time to be on the show. Um, there's some nice sun going on down in California. It's a little hot out here, but uh, did you have it, your baby yet? No. So uh, yeah, no. So I just found out she's pregnant. So she's she's like two months now. So it's coming and I'm 40 and uh, yeah, so that's the thing. It's like we were moving. We just sold our house. We're moving in another house. She had some issues and we had to run to the hospital. And then, I mean, it just, it was like, just all these things went wrong. Everything's oh, okay. good. Okay. Okay, good. No, no, no. Look, I'm really happy. I just, I, I had misunderstood the information. A mutual yeah. friend had said that you were moving, and then uh, also I think that you were that you were giving birth, or that that's what came out, which yeah. is a which is a thing. So that's why I thought. But dude, I can tell you this: moving sucks worse yes. than anything in the world. And if anybody ever like, and, and when you hit our age. Uh -huh. we can't bribe our friends with beer and pizza anymore because they're old too. Right. So they're like, I, I, it's not worth it, man. <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah. So. The next time I'm saving enough money to pay someone to do all of it, I'm not doing any <laughs> of it. I mean, I had to move it, but I still had to go put everything away and get everything. You know I mean? You still work there. I'm done yeah. with it. We got, we're going to build a house. And so, yeah, but she's doing good. She's, we found out, you know, she had a little bit of spotting. We ended up had to run to the ER and, and everything's good. Baby's mm -hmm. heart rate's there. The baby's there. We, you know, it was the first ultrasound, not the way we wanted to have it, but everything's good and we're just moving. It sucks actually too, though, because, you know, I'm, I have a full-time day job and she's trying to pack and she can't lift anything. And it's, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's not the best time to be moving, but we'll get through it. <laughs> we'll make it. We made it happen. Yeah. We got it to work out. So. But, oh, you made it happen. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, man. Well, thank you again. Uh, and uh, hey, thanks everyone for tuning in. This is the end of the show. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success.